Hey there, my name's Claire, and I'm 34. This is the story of how I got revenge on my evil mother-in-law who was hellbent on trying to ruin my life. For a long time, I held my tongue and turned the other way, but everyone has their breaking point, and I believe I reached mine some months ago. To give you some context, you should know that whenever it came to my mother-in-law giving me something, it was always of poor, South Park quality. For example, on our wedding day, this gift is from my beautiful mother-in-law, Justine. Let me open it up. Oh, I see, it's a second-hand spatula. Thank you so much, this is very lovely. Or when it was my 31st birthday, oh Justine, you really shouldn't have. Just open it. Oh wow, it's a, what is it? You silly goose, it's a shovel. Oh, how lovely, but there appears to be some rust on it. It's a refurbished shovel. I later on found out that she took it from the neighbor's shed and gifted it to me. There was also that time I held a dinner party and she bought the cheapest bottle of wine that she could find. At this rate, I'd rather that she didn't do anything for me at all. But the instances that hurt the most, the moments that bruised my soul, is when she insists on cooking food for me, but every time I try it, it tastes horrendous. At first, I was very forgiving and sympathetic because some people just can't cook all that well, which is fine. I thought that since it was coming from a genuine place of wanting to cook for someone you love, it didn't matter how it tasted, but the thought behind it. I later found out that the same dishes prepared by her, but for different people, tasted absolutely spectacular. And after trying and failing to gaslight myself for some time, I came to the conclusion that she was simply sabotaging my food. Go on, Claire, try my casserole. I made it. I'm a bit stuffed from all the food you've given me. Okay, then, but at least eat just the bike for me. I would love to. I took a bite, my stomach was already bubbling from what was about to come. I ate some of the casseroles, and just as I suspected, it was horrendous. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that she was trying to poison me. You might be wondering what my husband must have thought throughout all of this, and he, of course, didn't believe me. I didn't blame him either, it's hard to accept such an outlandish statement, especially when it comes to your mother. But I would constantly beg and plead with him for him to try the food that she prepared for me, but he would always brush me off, telling me that I'm crazy. There would be other moments in which my husband would be willing to try my food to make sure that I'm saying is true, but he would always be stopped by Justine. Hey, that food is for Claire. I made it extra special for her, you know her dietary requirements. Yes, I indeed had certain dietary requirements. I'm a vegetarian, married into a family that practically enjoys their beef and pork still moving and oinking on the plate. Needless to say, they are avid meat lovers, and so whenever there would be large family gatherings, Justine would be subjected to making a modified plated version for me, which I always appreciated. But I couldn't help but feel like zero effort was being put into my dishes. After realizing that Justine was sabotaging my food, I tried to sympathize with her still, and I thought that perhaps she simply resented me for having to make her go the extra mile in preparing a separate dish for me. I can see how that might annoy someone, but it didn't explain her giving me trashy and awful gifts every time she could. Nonetheless, I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt. That is, until it was a few months ago, and I invited a co-worker of mine to one of the family cookouts. It should be noted that my co-worker, like me, is also vegetarian, so this would have been a good indicator to see whether my mother-in-law was actively being malicious or she just couldn't cook a decent vegetarian meal to save her life. To my surprise, it turns out that she made two special vegetarian dishes, one for my co-worker and one for me. Why she couldn't just make one big vegetarian dish for the both of us to share, I didn't know. Well, I did know. Eventually, I found out that Justine could cook. I sneakily tasted my co-worker's dish without Justine's knowledge, and it was very tasty. 
It was one of the best vegetarian dishes that I had ever tasted, even better than what I normally cook for myself. My dish, on the other hand, tastes completely dreadful. There were several moments when I had to stop myself from gagging at the dinner table because of how putrid it was. Later on that night, when we all went to our respective homes, I approached my husband Liam about it again. Oh hush, Claire, you're being dramatic, and frankly, a little bit rude. I swear it on everything, babe, she's sabotaging my food. She doesn't want to prepare good food for me. Well, even if the food is poor quality, which I highly doubt, what do you expect from her? She's just one woman. If you want, you should try and help her in the kitchen where she's cooking. Maybe she doesn't know how to cook vegetarian food. See, the thing is, I've offered on many occasions to help her in the kitchen, but then she gets defensive and starts accusing me of hating her food. Which you do. And also, when I try and make suggestions, she gets even more offended. There's no winning with this woman. Maybe you should just bring your container of food to the gatherings then, and risk being perceived as rude by the whole family. I mean, what sort of guest is that? It's not like I have celiac disease or some other food allergy that requires me to accommodate myself. I'm simply a vegetarian. Everyone can prepare vegetarian food, so if I bring my own, people will think I'm rude. Also, remember my co-worker Lucy? She was lovely. Yeah, well, guess what, the food was also lovely. You know her vegetarian food. The import to truly contemplate what was going on, he sat down on the bed and pondered some more. Well, say something. Okay, you're my wife, and you know that I love you. I want to believe you, but I think that this is all just in your head. I get that my mother can be a bit unique with her gift-giving abilities, but going as far as to sabotage your food, that's really low and dangerous too, right? Exactly, this one time, I swear to God, I smell bleaching in my food. I had to excuse myself to the bathroom for the remainder of the dinner party to avoid eating it. Claire, I think that because you two are not on the best of terms, you see her in a different light than most of us do. My mother is a great chef, I don't disagree, in fact, after tasting some of my co-workers' food tonight, I'm convinced that she can do a splendid job over some reason when it comes to me, she doesn't want to cook properly enough. I won't hear you smile to my mother any longer. She's an amazing cook, you're being delusional. I was fed up. How many times did I need to try and convince my husband that I was telling the truth? I decided that I had to show him what I was saying was correct, and so I patiently waited for the next family gathering to ensue so that I could make my move. It was approximately a month later when I got a call from my mother-in-law. Claire, darling, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And you? I'm excited, as you know we're holding another family gathering this weekend. Uncle JJ just returned from his job posting in France, and now we have to celebrate. Please tell me that you and Liam can make it. Oh, Justine, you know we wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, wonderful. Uncle JJ didn't want anything fancy, despite coming from France, you can imagine. So, we're just gonna have things like sliders and sandwiches, very casual. You can even invite your co-worker friend again, she was darling. Unfortunately, she won't be able to make it this time around, but Liam and I will be there. Oh, what a shame. But I'm glad you two will be coming. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, I have decided to buy you some special plates so that it would be easier for me to distinguish between vegetarian and non-vegetarian dishes. They're very beautiful and navy blue. You'll love them. Not an issue, Justine. Thank you for being so gracious. Alrighty then, see you soon. I hung up the phone. 
In any other circumstances, I wouldn't have minded having different plates from everyone else, it's just a plate after all. But considering what I knew about her sabotaging me, I knew that having different plates was just another way of her trying to alienate me from everyone else. Everyone else in the family enjoys their meals thoroughly, but mine are always lousy and pathetic. So when I complain, I look snobbish and entitled, but that is not the case. I know that rumors have been going around about me being bratty, and I wished I could just share my food with them for them to see that what I'm being served is not right, but Justine is always watching like a hawk. For some reason, she gets extremely upset and offended when I try and offer my food to someone to taste and or when I don't finish my food. Thankfully, there have been times when I had managed to escape, but unfortunately, more often than not, I have to chug the food down as quickly as I could just so I could avoid tasting what I was putting in my stomach. Whenever I come over, I dread it, and I always anticipate going home, scrubbing my mouth clean, and making some proper food for myself. But this upcoming weekend, I wasn't feeling that dread. On the contrary, I was rather excited because I had the plan to show everyone, for once and for all, that I wasn't crazy, rude, or dramatic. I had genuine concerns that were not being met, and everyone needed to see that. The weekend came, and as usual, Liam and I brought our signature coleslaw to the barbecue. There were steaks and sausages and chickens everywhere. As a vegetarian, it was slightly overwhelming to be surrounded by so much meat, even though I was used to it by now. It seemed as though Justine went all out this time for Uncle JJ's return because even the meat lovers were like, this is way too much meat. Nonetheless, the party was great. I was beginning to enjoy myself by chatting trivially with some in-laws, as well as playing with my nieces and nephews. But the time finally came, and Justine with a call for everyone to come instead of the big dining table set up outside for everyone to sit at. When she called for us, my stomach began to rumble, that all too familiar feeling of dread and disgust. But I quelled it, and I forced myself to smile and sit calmly and happily next to Liam. You see, Claire, everyone's having a good time. How I even saw you enjoying yourself. Just relax and let loose, mom worked hard on this, and I'm sure your food would taste good if you just adopted a more positive attitude. At this point, I was getting sick of hearing Liam preach on his high horse, having no idea what it was like dealing with his mother and being forced to eat the dreadful food. But I had a plan that was about to go down. Justine proceeded to bring out the food with the help of the older children who love bringing up the dishes. Justine herself brought out mine and Liam's plates, and just as she had said on the phone, my plate was a beautiful navy blue. Unfortunately, this was a stark contrast against the other white plates that were all around the table, but that didn't matter to me at the moment, as I was ready to enact my revenge. Just as everyone was settled down at the table and grace had been said, people were ready to eat when I suddenly cried out, Oh my goodness, is that a snake? Everyone was startled, and their seats, the children began to squeal in excitement as they were all rushed inside with some of them fighting back, eager to see the snake. The adults all sprang up to action, with the women leading the elderly and the children away, and the men going towards where I pointed, being extra cautious but manly and burly, nonetheless, to protect their family from this unforeseen danger. While everyone was tending to their designated roles, I trailed behind the women, looking back at the dinner table all set out with the delicious and beautifully prepared food. Thankfully, all of the food looked pretty similar, and one really couldn't tell the difference between plate A and plate B if they tried, which is why my mother-in-law made her special plate for me, so that she could easily tell which plate had the nasty food and which food was good. I hurried, because I started to note people making their way back from the forest, brushing up ahead. I snatched the sandwiches from my plate and Liam's plate and swapped them fast so that I wouldn't be detected. At that moment, Justine was re-emerging from the home as she got word on the phone from Liam that it was a false alarm and that if there was a snake, it was long gone by now. Everyone began to return to their seats, all slightly giddy and excited from the discovery, even if it was a false one. People seemed to enjoy the rush of adrenaline they got from the situation, even the elders. 
Everyone resituated themselves in their seats, and I said, My bad, everyone. I must have not seen the ground properly. Please excuse that disturbance. Everyone responded quite well to the disturbance, not being too irritated with having their eating time disturbed by a false alarm. It's no issue, honey. Better safe than sorry, and everyone seemed to have enjoyed the little thrill of the incident by a snake, perhaps it smelled all the meat and decided to join in. Everyone laughed. It was indeed a good party, that was until Liam decided to take a bite of his, my vegetarian sandwich. It's crazy, actually. Takes a bite. We were looking so frantically for that damn snake, but he stopped dead in his tracks, and all eyes were on him since he was the one telling the story. He began to gag, spitting out his sandwich on the plate. Yuck, that is horrendous. Liam, how dare you say something so rude? I work so hard on these meals. Everyone began to slowly eat their food, admiring the succulent and juicy taste they were experiencing. They subsequently started questioning Liam and his reaction to the food. Uncle JJ, who was the quiet one of the bunch, even remarked how it tasted fine to him. I don't know, my food just tasted weird for a second. Sorry, Mama, I didn't mean to be rude, it's just I've never tasted that before. My bad, maybe it's a new recipe. Let me try again. Again, Liam tried to take a bite of the sandwich, but he was gagging before it was fully in his mouth. At this point, Justine was quite flustered, and she huffed and puffed about how rude Liam was being. Mom, I'm sorry, but I can't eat that. I don't know what's wrong with me, but maybe it isn't me, maybe this sandwich is just off. Nonsense, my food is never off, except it is. Everyone turned to me, wondering how I could say such a thing. It was only at this point that Liam realized that I hadn't been eating my food. Babe, why weren't you eating? Because I can't eat it, it has meat in it. The table all shared confused looks, and I saw the realization in Liam's eyes. Mom, have you been sabotaging Claire's food? Everyone gasped almost in unison, and Justine began to start shouting. Liam, I don't know what's gotten into you, maybe it's your spoiled and rotten wife who is convincing you to do this, but I will not have it. Do you hear me? Apologize this instant. No, Mom, it's your food that is spoiled and rotten. Claire was right all along. You guys, here, Uncle JJ, taste this. Liam handed over his sandwich, Uncle JJ, who tried to take a bite, but had to stop himself from throwing up all over the table. At that moment, Justine's eyes snapped to me, and she said with venom in her words, What have you done? I should be asking you what you've done. You're the one who's been sabotaging my meal so that every time I come here, I'm in despair. Attention everybody, I have to come clean. I made a false report about the snake. Yes, I'm so sorry for lying to you all, but I needed a distraction. You see, ever since I became part of this family, Justine has been sabotaging and poisoning my food. Everyone sounded shocked. It's true. I have had my suspicions for a long time, and you all might have thought I was being snobbish, but just taste the sandwich that Justine made for me, if you can even stomach it. By the time I finished my sentence, the sandwich had already made a couple of rotations amongst the men and women. After they had their reactions of gagging and dry heaving, they recommended that the elderly and the children needn't partake due to how rancid the food smelled, with even one family member wanting to go to the hospital. Your move, Justine. All right, fine. You caught me. I was sabotaging your food, as you claim. Why on earth would you do that? Because she hates me. She's always had it out for me since day one. At that moment, Liam began to look green. He bent over and began vomiting all over the grass. After he was done, he flopped down on the patio. 
So, Mom, what did you put in that sandwich? Liam, I. Oh God, are you okay? This sandwich wasn't meant for you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone. Please forgive me. Uncle JJ's homecoming had to be cut short as several family members had to escort Liam to the hospital. It turns out that putting rancid mushrooms with a hint of cat feces does not do well in the human body. Liam was hospitalized for some time as he was recovering from this food poisoning and my mother-in-law was consequently jailed for her part to play in this after giving her full confession. The events of that day let me know that this lady was willing to kill me due to her unbridled hatred of me. Had it been me, she would have been lollygagging until the sunset, but because it was her son, she was doing everything in her power to rectify her mistake, but it was too late, the damage had already been done. Thankfully, my husband made a full recovery, and all while I was visiting him in the hospital, he would apologize profusely for not believing in me when I said that his mother would sabotage my food. His mother was trying to post bail, but the other family members wouldn't allow it, saying that she needed to sit there for some time and think about what she'd done. People who go and visit her always inform me of how sorry she is, and that seeing her son in such distress made her realize her erroneous ways. I, for one, am not accepting such an apology because it had to take her seeing her son in pain for her to realize that what she was doing was wrong. You meet to tell me that, for all these years, not once did she stop and think that she was being evil? Lord knows what else she's been putting in my food, and I have to stomach it for the longest time, often vomiting in secret and missing days of work just to nurse myself back to health. After revealing all of this to my husband, he felt even more sorry for me and promised to always believe me from now on. I'm just glad that I managed to teach two lessons, one, always listen to your wife, and two, don't mess with me because you might end up in jail. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.